Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Northern Burlington. I'm Logan Stewart alongside Mr. Matt Pona. Hello, how we doing? And we're live at the Northern Burlington and New Egypt baseball game. Looks like we got Richie Brown Luden on the mound. He starts off with a first pitch curveball for a strike. Richie does like to work backwards, starting with a curveball. Comes back with another one low in the zone to get the swing, and he's ahead. 0 2, which is where you want to be as a pitcher. Yeah. And then you have the world is your oyster to do with as you please. Northern Burlington coming into this game at a hot start at 13 and 5. New Egypt coming in at 11 and 6 as that's sent out to left field, fielded by Keith Tillett for an out. So it's one out in the top of the first. Hounds come into this game at 13 and Four on the season, a couple tough losses uh, in the division against Morristown and RV. As they're looking to make a big postseason run yep. in the playoffs. It's kind of a tough season because we started late, uh, coming off a year where we didn't really play at all, short of yeah. two weeks of practice. So Expectations were high, too. Anybody's, it's anybody's game, really. It's just about who can who can run long distance at this point. But uh, the Hounds are coached by Rick Doppler. He's been doing this for over 20 years with assistant coach, varsity assistant Gene Darling. A little chopper. Foul. foul outside of third base. Looks like the Hounds are fielding. Uh, got C.J. Fredericks at first base. Nico. Nico Garnier at second. Uh, Marco Menino is playing short with Drew Wires at third. Keith Tillett's in left. Oh, there's another shot. Little, little high ball, high pop. Out to shallow right field. Garnier has Picked it. up by Garnier. So it's the second out of the inning. First pitch is a ball. At the plate hitting right now is Michael Dolan. He's a senior. Three-hole hitter, usually arguably one of the better hitters on the team. You, you like to put uh, somebody who's got a little bit of power but makes good contact in that spot. Hopefully you can get your first two runners on, your speedy guys, yeah. move them over, and then this guy can take care of uh, scoring them. Another one coming up high. Richie has a little bit of a tendency to, to miss high, which Sometimes it'll work out because then you don't have as many passed balls, but also you leave balls high in the zone, sometimes they tend to get crushed. So you gotta be you gotta be cautious. He's not mm -hmm. overpowering anybody with his velocity. He, he's more of a finesse pitcher. He's got good control and command uh, on on you know most of his pitches, and like I said, he likes to work backwards, which you know a lot of guys, especially at the high school level, aren't familiar with. That one's in for a strike. Um, so you know, you'll start him off with a curveball and it can it can kind of throw guys off, throw their timing off, and then you know, make it a little bit a little bit more advantageous for you as a pitcher. Ooh, nice pitch there. Yep, got him on another breaking ball. He did not agree, but it's not up to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, Ooh. Must have just, oh, he got it. Oh, he did. Got okay. the call. So strike three called. With the curveball on the low outside. Middle of the first. There you go. Bounds. Batting up next. Not a lot going on for New Egypt's offense right there, but that's yeah. okay. Up to bat first, we got Nico Garnier, second baseman. So pitching for New Egypt is number seven, Gavin Kinks. That one's in high. So coming up to the plate now for Northern leadoff hitter, Nico Garnier. I believe he's uh, already got a 1-0 count. Get a strike in there, low, fastball. Northern and New Egypt played earlier in the year. Northern won that game 13-5. to 
Yeah, the uh, New Egypt just kept hanging in there. Couldn't quite get to that 10-run yeah. threshold to end it soon, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, New Egypt's not a bad team. They're just, you know, it's a tough It's tough being a Group 1 school playing you know, a bigger Group 3. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a tough challenge. You just don't have as much of a, a, a pool of talent to pull from. Mm -hmm. But uh, Nico takes a, a ball there. So I think we're at, what, 3-1? Hitters count? Think so. Yeah. You, you want to make sure you get something that's right where you like it. You got to be. You get the chance to be selective here. Uh, kind of go for your pitch, which is nice. Must not have liked that one. Takes it for a strike. Setting it to what I believe to be full yeah, count. Full count. So you're looking base hit ball four here. Nico is a very speedy base runner, so he's. I mean, that's part of the reason why he's lead off. Uh, but you, you want to get him on because then you get him to first, you're more or less guaranteed to get him to second. Uh, he's very hard to throw out. So. so he takes ball four there, so Hounds get a runner on first. Yep, free base, no problem there. Bringing up uh, Marco Menino, who's playing shortstop today. Very solid infielder. Garnier has 10 walks on the season. That's third on the team. As Kinks checks at first. That one's yeah. high in. Marco's a little bit of a streaky hitter. So a lot of times if he starts a game off with a base hit, you can count on two or three more. Uh, but sometimes he'll go a game or two and just not be able to, to make solid contact. Uh, so it's it's challenging sometimes for him, but that's okay. But he is a very very aggressive and uh, skilled base runner. Um, he's always looking for opportunities to take another bag, and and that's that's an asset to have out there because uh, it you know puts you in scoring position. You want to get guys in scoring position and get things done, especially high in your order with your 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 power and your your contact hitters coming Garnier up. Garnier steals Garnier. to second, and uh, I believe he's safe. It was it was it was a great break and yes. uh, kind of a kind of a slow pop from the catcher, so that would have been a, a tough play to make for him, especially with his speed too. Secondary lead there, ball in foul territory. First baseman's able to make a play on it, so it's out number one. And uh, Northern has a man and runner and running in scoring position as now they have their big hitter Drew Wires coming up to the plate. Yep. Drew tends to alternate between shortstop and third base. Uh, it's kind of a back and forth every other game kind of thing. He and, and Marco alternate, but uh, Drew's more of a natural shortstop, I would say. Solid fielder, uh, really good hitter, Drew good Wire. power. He leads the team in RBIs at 22. He also leads the team in runs at 24. Held up on that one, takes a strike for number one. King steps up to deliver. Taking his time, checking the runner. That one comes in low. Good frame by the catcher, doesn't get the call. Drew Wires went three for three against New Egypt in the previous game this year. He puts the bat on one, pulls it just a foul of third base, and gets another opportunity. Drew's definitely more of a, a pull style hitter. Um, you know, he'll hit to center field and, and you know, put put a, put good good swing on a on a ball, but uh, doesn't hit a lot to opposite field. Gets a hold of one there, also and foul. foul. It's a 
patented Drew Wires hard foul ball. He usually gets one or two of those every at bat. Mm -hmm. Back in the box here. Got CJ Fredericks on deck, four hole hitter. Puts that one through down low for a ball. <clears throat> Drew Wires leads the team and walks at 14. That is a lot, and he drives one out towards left. Another, another foul ball. Good contact there, line drive. Sharply hit, just just foul of the foul line. Nico heads back to second base. He's definitely had a lot of those this year. <clears throat> on, on base percentage has to be through the roof then if he's getting all those walks yeah. and hits. <laughs> he's also been hit seven times. And is on base plus slugging because yeah. uh, he, he, hits, he hits for power. He's a big, strong kid. Let's that one through again low in the dirt. Good block by the catcher, keeping Nico at second base. It's, uh, it's got to be a, st a tough situation for a catcher with Nico on second base. You know, a low curveball, low breaking ball, you got to make sure you get in front and knock that thing down because he will take off. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, he's, he's home plate and you don't, even, you don't even know what happened. Drew Wires this year, 22 for 49. That's pretty good. Yeah. Ball comes in high, takes ball four. So there's one of those walks we're talking about, yeah. <clears throat> which brings up C.J. Fredericks, the big man. Um, he comes and he clocks in somewhere around 6'4", 6'5". Yeah. Uh, and tall. when he gets a hold of a ball, that, that tree you see out there in center field, uh, that's where it's going, which is a solid 400 feet. So. Lots of power. Yep. Takes ball one. CJ tends to like balls. That, well, obviously, everybody likes balls that are out over the middle yeah. of the plate. Uh, and as a pitcher, you want to try to avoid that with everybody. Uh, but he does better on balls middle out. Um, has a little bit of trouble with the inside pitches. But you know, even if he gets a hold of one, not so great. You, you're gonna you're gonna send it for a ride. Yeah. He's really swinging at it. It's foul ball there, two and one, or one and one. I, I think. think one and yeah. one. Yeah. Steps out, calls timeout. Pitcher probably taking a little bit too long, checking runners, trying to make sure. You know, as a pitcher, you got to make sure you uh, you don't become predictable and that you mix up your rhythm so you keep the runners off balance. You don't want them to be able to read you too well, get good breaks, and you don't want to double steal. That he one drives sent out one to, to left. Center. And forget about it. And that's gone. That's in the construction equipment out there. Yeah. Uh, so C.J. Fredericks with an early three-run home run, bringing in Nico and Drew. And everybody comes out to congratulate him. That ball was uh, that ball was well hit. That was yeah. over the normal fence. You could see, uh, with the construction being what it is, they had to move the center field fence in, uh, probably about fifteen or twenty feet. Yeah, it's so pretty short out there. What now. was already a short center field is uh -huh. an even shorter center field now. Uh, probably, if it's over three hundred feet, I would be surprised. Yeah. Um, but that one that went over the original fence. I probably put that one at around three fifty, three sixty five. That was a solid shot. Mm -hmm. So Brian Drum Ryan Drumboski steps up to plate. He's uh, hitting in the five spot. Usually he is uh, obviously he's the ace. So yeah. you know when when the opportunity is there for him to pitch, um, he's 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 in there. But today is not that day. He's probably got to get a few days rest after pitching the other day. Um, so more than likely he's out playing right field or or you know right or left one of those two. Actually Keith Tillett was in left, so he's probably in right. But. Uh, Ryan Trubowski. Good smart kid. Yeah, he is a uh, very good baseball player. Um, Trumboski leads the team in strikeouts with 34 this year. Yeah, he as does. A pitcher. He does. Uh, he does a nice job. I mean, his his fastball won't knock your socks off, 
But when you put that in conjunction with his breaking ball and his other pitches, it's really hard to hit because the you, you don't know what's coming. And his curveball looks like a fastball until the last second, then it just dies. Um, so he is an incredibly hard to hit. And he's a competitor, aggressive, wants to be out there, wants to be playing. He's only allowed 13 hits this year. Yeah, he's, uh, that's why he's that's why he's number and one. Four earned runs as well. Yep. In 22.1 innings pitched. Yep. To, he, uh, you know, got a loss at RV. Pitched a great game. Just yeah. you know, it was close and uh, ended up coming out on the bottom there, unfortunately. But uh, you know, that's how baseball works. Anybody could beat anybody any day. It's a weird game. Oh, gets a bat on one, but it looks like a little pop fly, shallow center field here. And they make a play on it. So two outs. Yep, out number two. Looks like Franklin Peters is up now. Franklin Peters is catcher. He's a sophomore, young guy, but uh, really good mechanics as a catcher. He's got fast pop, nice little, little pop on the ball there. Shortstop makes a play for out number three. But like I was saying, Franklin is a really solid defensive catcher. Mm -hmm. um, ball, you know, the ball rarely ever slips past him. He's good at framing. Um, he moves quick, quick feet, quick hands, gets up, makes throws. Uh, so he's hard to steal on, too. So C.J. Fredericks gets the Hounds on a lead with a three-run bomb out to the left. At number nine, Richard Trepanese out here to lead off. Looks like he takes a ball, first pitch. Richie Brown Luden is uh, kind of a workhorse. He'll go out there and he'll just throw. He'll throw a whole game here and there, and you know doesn't yeah. really complain. Gets the job done. Um, and he's smart. He pitches. He pitches smart. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is, is Richie is a certified pilot. I did know that he actually. He flies yes. planes, which <laughs> is really cool. Yeah. There's a little little line drive out to second base. Play made by Nico Garnier. Throws it over to first base to CJ to get the out. Started off with a little 4-3. Play to first. <clears throat> So New Egypt season is that's come to an end. They have one more game left against Florence. That's on the twenty eighth. As I said earlier, there are eleven and six this season. Big swing there they for strike one. Are definitely a top group one school. Yeah, they're looking to pick up a, a, a decent seed for uh, for the playoffs. Yeah, when the time comes. It's interesting to see, you know, like a, when you get a group one team, small school, you know, they only have, I think, about 500 students um, yeah. that could pull, a, you know, nine to 12 solid baseball players. Now, baseball is a tough game. It is. Uh -huh. It doesn't it doesn't apply to a lot of the uh, standard rules that you would think of for most sports, because there could be people who are, fun, you know, phenomenal athletes and, you know, playing football and basketball or whatever who just can't hang on a baseball field. And there are some baseball players who you take them off a baseball field and it's not pretty. But uh, yeah. You know, it requires you to be able to do a very specific set of things that don't necessarily apply to other sports. Uh, and it uh, looks like we got a walk here to lead off. You don't want to do that. Um, yeah. As a pitcher, you, you don't want to get the first the first batter on base with no outs. You want to try to get that first out always. I believe um, this is, is this New Egypt's first base runner, I think, This is right? the first yes. base runner of the game. And you want to keep him off because now the other team has the opportunity to trade an out for a base or an out for a run. You know, you can bunt him over. And then you're in scoring position, and then, you know, a sack fly or something along those Connor lines. Connor still well. Hits, hits the ball. It. Popped out up. to center field there. Oh. Ooh, Mateo Menino makes a diving attempt, not able to get it. Uh, Mateo is a, he's actually a really good defender, good good yeah. ball, ball player. Long and lean, moves like a gazelle. Uh, very quick, you know, good, good skills on, on reading. Um, quick delivery, strong arm. Um, tends to get DH'd for. He's a little, little outmatched sometimes at the plate at this level, but he's young. He's only a sophomore. So now Justin McKnight stepping up to the plate for New Egypt. He pitched. He is also a pitcher. He pitched the last game against Northern. The runners on first and second, no outs. Puts Sends one in play. Out. out to center field on the ground. Mateo makes a throw in. So now we got the bases juiced. 
Bases loaded, no outs, right? It's a tough situation yeah. to be in. Well, that was quick. Yeah. Well, this is baseball. You can have yeah. one inning where you get three up, three down, and then uh, you struggle. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch by Richie. That's a good thing about Richie. It's just, as a coach, you want to see a guy who you can get. You know, you, you get stuck in these situations sometimes, but he, he doesn't really get flustered. A lot of times, guys will start panicking. Oh no, I put three runners on. I, I got to you know, I got to do something yeah. now. It's uh -oh. like you get a little something like that. Unfortunately, that's one of those ones that, that Franklin's not able to hold on to. And that's a tough pitch. You know, a breaking ball low in the dirt, just yeah. at the right spot. You know, didn't really have an opportunity to get in front, so you get a, a run scored there. The Hounds are also missing their starting catcher, Andrew Bressler, today. Um, Is that, you know, Andrew's a, he's a good defensive catcher as well. Yeah. He, he hits pretty well. Um, I'd say he may, may be a little bit better hitter than Franklin, but they're pretty close to on par defensively, mm -hmm. um, which is what you want to see. You know, you got a young kid who you could throw in there at varsity, and, you know, you'll, you know you have another two years with him there, and he'll be able to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Oof. Oof. Looks like you got a change up there. Yeah. That kid was way behind. So now, one and two, I think, is the count. New Egypt got a run on that wild pitch, and now runners at second and third. That's ideally, outside. Ideally here looking for a short, shallow fly ball or a, a grounder, hard ground ball to third or first. Um... You know, and hold those runners there. A sharp hit ball up the middle, even if it's to a short shortstop or second baseman, that's probably going to score a run. Also, you know, sack fly would be bad. Here you go, you got one. A Check the runner. Ball. The runner from third goes. He's going to score, get the out at first. So, like I said, as a base runner, if you're on third base and you're in that situation, um, you're looking for a ball up the middle. You know, if it's up the middle, you go. Anything to the corners, you got to stop and look. Uh, but Richie did his job, got the ground ball, got the out a little bit at a time. So now New Egypt down by one, coming back here. So two outs, now in the top of the second. All right. I think there might be one. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, uh, Garnier makes an just error. Just a little bobbler down. CJ went for it, decided not to go. Uh, I think that kind of threw off Nico, and he kind of bobbles it and end up Giving up a run and a base hit at the same time. Well, not a base hit. That's definitely yeah. going to go down as an error in Looks the Looks like some miscommunication there. And now bases are loaded again, I think. As, uh, yeah. Ideally, you would... you would No, it's, it looks like we got first and second. Oh, okay. That's the umpire there. Um, or first and third, I yeah. apologize. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a ball that, that's in a tough spot. You know, that could be a first baseman's ball. Ideally, it would be depending on who's playing a CJ... He's good. He's a good defensive player. He's yeah. not the quickest. That's a tough ball for him to get to. Mm -hmm. Great block there by Franklin to stop that run. Yeah. All right. Just dropping, taking it to the chest, keeping it in front. He does a great job working in the arc, making sure things come right back to the plate so that he can make a play on it should he need to. That one's in for a strike. Nice pitch. And low, the two one count here. Oof, get him Oof, three one, man. and you got some place to put them. So worst yeah. case, you keep the force at all bags. You know, depending, on that, I'm pretty sure we have one out. At that case, you can bring your corners up and. Try to get that out at home. Let your middle infielders turn a double play. Should they get the opportunity, but we'll see what happens here. Three one. Swing and <coughs> miss. Nice so, pitch. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was good. It's a full count now. Brown Luden looking to end the inning. Get 
it's a little foul ball. It's going to be out of play. You can see how close our track is to yeah. our baseball field, <laughs> which sometimes gets treacherous. Occasionally, track team out there have some. Watch uh, out! It's yeah. Well, <laughs> the days where they have a track meet and a baseball game at the same time, it's like uh, somebody might um, somebody might get hurt today. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you got to make sure. Uh -huh. You're paying attention when you're when you're watching a baseball game at Northern or you're watching a track and field event because <laughs> it could get uh, it could get dangerous because all those track track and field locations literally wrap around the baseball field. Uh -huh. So foul ball anywhere could be dangerous. Oh, Ooh. that's a tough call. A little low outside there, trying to get him a swing, so. or at least clip the corner. Not able to do so. So now the bases are loaded again. One out, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty sure there's still one out. Which brings up number 10, Michael Dolan again. Well, I believe he was the three hitter, right? Uh, I think so, Although yes. it might not be him. He might have just gone to pick up the bat. He's probably on deck. Nope, oh. there we go. It is Michael Dolan. Okay. I was right. Michael so Dolan leads his team in RBIs at 27. Yeah, it's uh, this is a tough spot. Bases loaded, one out, three hitter up. Chances are you're going to get at the very least a deep fly ball uh, to sacrifice and, and get that runner from third in. So here you're looking. Obviously, you want a strikeout or a ground ball to yeah. turn two. Doesn't look like corners are playing up. So they're probably trying to get two regardless. Don't think they're expecting a bunt in this situation. Usually, in this situation with a three hitter, you're you're letting them swing away. You don't no, want to. You don't this, want to waste that. Bat. This isn't Michael Dolan. That's number twenty. Oh. <laughs> That's number twenty, Zachary Jenkins. Yeah, Michael Dolan's on deck. So yeah, so that's a ball. We're at the two hitter, also usually a pretty good contact hitter. As you can see out in center field, construction out there. That's where the new weight room. Fitness and, center. Yeah, as well as the new athletic training office. And it's going to look really nice here when everything's done. It should be... Uh, should be a big, a big improvement off of uh, our former weight room, which was basically just a two classroom. classrooms <laughs> put together with some yeah. uh, some weightlifting equipment in it, and a few ellipticals. Gets a ground ball to shortstop. This could be over two. to Nico. Oh, but we had two outs, oh, so we okay. made the made the easy one at second base. Nice little six four, and uh, put it to bed. Right. So Hounds are so the Warriors only get two runs. Hounds left two men three, on base. Gave yeah. two back. Here we got Keith Tillett. Tillett is a freshman, um, but he is an excellent athlete. He's left fielder for the Hounds. Not much today. for stature, but he is about as strong as you can be and, and fast as lightning. Um, and a pretty decent hitter. All right, so looking to get things started here. This is a good situation to be in. He's a little bit lower in the lineup. You know, he's younger, doesn't have as much experience, so he's hitting, I think, in the 7 or 8 spot. But he drives a ball like that. You know, even even a what would typically be a routine ground ball is uh, basically going to be a base hit. He's already at second base, so that was just yeah. like a, a little little chopping ground ball <laughs> past third, and and it's a double for him. Yeah. Um, so Very any fast. yeah anything here could could score him. Which brings up uh, Matt Bressler in 28 at bats. He has eight stolen bases. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, even when he's not you know starting in the lineup, he's uh, a very very useful uh, courtesy it. runner yeah. for pitcher catcher. Uh, so Matt Bressler's coming in. He's usually a bench player, but he, he does a pretty good job stroking the ball. It's in there for a strike, so. I'm pretty sure I saw him in right field before. Yes. That's where he usually plays. It's a bat on it. He's a little non-traditional because uh, he's... One of the only guys I know who chooses to swing a wood bat in high school baseball. Uh -huh. um, hitting with wood is really hard. 
It's, it's a lot harder than hitting with aluminum. Smaller sweet spot, you gotta really make sure you, you barrel it up well. But he does a pretty good job with it. Gets a hold of one, shallow little base hit over to right field, and that's probably gonna score till it. Now he holds up, holds him up. That was a little too shallow, so the right fielder was able to make a play and get the ball in quick to the to the catcher. So that'll keep Keith there. As a coach, this is a good spot to be in because uh, you got a runner on first and third. You got to obviously watch out for the, the third to first move uh, from the pitcher. Um, but here you can you can steal and and try to get draw a throw down to second base and and with till its speed, it would be very hard. Even if they ran a read play to to, to throw him out at at, at home. It's like we got Mateo Menino who throws right, hits left. Doesn't get, like I was saying before, doesn't get a lot of opportunities at the plate. Um, but today he's in there hitting for himself, which is nice. <laughs> Takes the first pitch for a ball, right? That looks what it looked like. Bressler's taking a lead. Bressler isn't the fastest, so um, if you did give him a steal, there's a chance you would be trading it out for a run, uh, hoping that the catcher would just throw down and take their out at second base. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Little pitcher-catcher conference. You know they're up to something. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on. Pickoff moves. I'm surprised to see the first baseman holding on so tight. Mateo Menino hasn't really played much this season. He doesn't, yeah, like I said, he doesn't yeah. get a lot of at bats. He has three at bats this year, one hit. It's hitting 333. Yeah, it was an RBI too. There you go. Yeah. A lot of times in the situation as a defense, you'll have your. Uh, First baseman back pocket, so he can, you could be there for a throw, should he need to be. But he'll also have the opportunity to, to field a, a ground ball uh, with a left-handed hitter. That's a, it's a likely thing to happen. Uh, but Mateo draws a walk, so he is on first. Got Bressler on second and Tillett on third, and we are back at the top of the order. So we'll see if Nico Garnier can get something done here. Ball is Whoa. low. Good block by the catcher. Little curveball in the dirt. An old 55 footer. Yeah. Although that did have, that looked more like a fastball, honestly. Yeah, trade out. Trade out balls here. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot at the pros, uh, yeah, but they definitely. also go through like eight dozen baseballs a game. <laughs> High school baseball, there's generally four, maybe five in play. Yeah. So the irony of that is he's going to trade that one in and just get it back again later. But <laughs> that's what it is. Nico puts a swing on, but doesn't make contact. Pulled his head out a little tiny bit. I believe we're uh, no outs here, right? Keith yeah. let off. Everybody's on. Pitch is in there for a strike low in the zone. Nico doesn't like the call, but I got to agree with uh, with the umpire yeah. there. That was right, right there. <clears throat> Nico has a tendency to be a little streaky too. Struggles at the plate sometimes, but uh, he's got the advantage. He's one of those guys who could steal base hits, which is by bunting. You know, yeah. A lot of times you're like, oh, I got I got a bunt. This is going to be an out, but. Uh, He's, he could he could bunt it and, and, and beat that thing out for a base hit pretty regularly. So that's a valuable tool to have in your, your arsenal as a hitter. Garnier leads the team in stolen bases. Yeah. At 10. Puts a ball foul. That's going to go out of play into the crowd. Gets another opportunity. It's nice out here at the farm today, 70 degrees. I will say is uh, we've been lucky this year. There have been no rainouts. It's been yeah. every game that was scheduled it's has been, been really played. really dry, too. Yep. 
But we are fortunate, and we don't we don't mention it enough. We have uh, a fantastic grounds crew. Glenn yeah. Liebhens is mm. the baseball whisperer. That man <laughs> cares so deeply for these fields. Um, He's out there every day. I see lining him. them, working the mounds, fixing the batters' boxes, dealing with yeah. the drainage uh, on on both the varsity and the JV field. So he is greatly appreciated by us and uh, ooh, draws a walk fourth. Fourth in a row, I believe. Now, Keith got a hit, but after that, that's the third walk in a row, which brings in Keith Tillett. Uh, and we're, you know, unfortunately for yeah. New Egypt, they're giving away uh, giving away runs here. That's a situation you don't want to be in. And now you got Drew Wires up. That's, yeah. yeah. You want he wanted to make, uh, <laughs> actually, this is Marco. Oh, okay. <laughs> but still, you, you want to make these guys hit the ball because you don't want to get to Drew with bases juiced. Uh, so, yeah, you want to. And even worse, CJ. Out. Yeah. Who already has a home run today, yep. CJ? This is a, as a coach. This is a tough position because you're only in the bottom of the second. You want to try and get, ideally, you want to get five innings of work out of your starting pitcher. Uh, that's best case scenario. Well, best case is you know you make it through the whole game, which is rare. Yeah. Uh, but you know an expectable and reasonable expectation is five innings, and yeah. then you go to your bullpen. You hopefully don't have to drive too far because. Everybody's trying to manage multiple games. If you, you know, a, a short week or a slow week is two games, um, and you know that rarely ever happens. And with a shortened season, a lot of these teams, they're packed, jam packed up. Oh, nice line drive! Pitcher and tries to make a play on it right up the middle there. Yeah. Beautiful piece of hitting. That one gets through up to the fence. That's going to score two, maybe three, <clears throat> and that puts Marco on second base. So three run score. Marco Menino clears the bases. Nice three run double there. That yeah. was that was textbook. That's what you want as a hitter. Just drive the ball right mm -hmm. back up the middle. Line drive, get a little tiny bit of backspin and lift, uh, and, and just send that thing out there to the fence. You know, home runs are fun and all, but yeah, I I, I would prefer just solid, old school baseball. So seven two now. Hounds lead by five. Yep. As I was saying before. You know, you want to you want to try to stay out of these situations because now your pitcher's given up seven runs and up, up into the second inning, and now you got to start looking at who's going to pitch next, how you're going to manage this week. You want to make sure you have enough pitching to get through it um, and try to win the games you can win. Sometimes you you have to just kind of put somebody out there who isn't necessarily the best option and hope for hope for the best. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I'm sure coach is hoping that we can they can recoup, score a few runs next inning, keep this thing close. But uh, this is Drew Wires here. Looks like he starts off with a 2-0 count. And this is not where you want to be with the runner in scoring position and Drew being able to pick his pitch. Here's a stat. What's that? Uh, Northern has not lost to New Egypt in eight years. Well, I mean... Yeah, it's a group one school, small. There's that. And, and we've been... I mean, eight years brings us back to 2013, right? Yes. 2013 was the beginning of what you could arguably say was the dynasty, the Northern Burlington dynasty. Yes. Uh, that was probably the second best team we've ever had. So between 13 and 15, we were stacked. Uh, mm -hmm. Drew drives another ball foul yeah. down the left <laughs> field line. But we had Zach Gakler, Ryan Shin. Tyler O'Dell, Adam Rapp, Brett Parlante. There were just a lot of really talented baseball uh -huh. players. Um, and we've been fortunate, even though those guys left, you know, those guys made two sectional championships. Uh, they made it to a state championship, unfortunately lost in 2015. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, we had Kev Kevin Welsh came in through there, uh, Pat Welsh. Uh, so we, we were able, fortunately, to, to kind of keep that going. We may not have the same level of talent we had those couple years, but we've still... You know, Northern Burlington develops good ball players yeah. out of all of these sending districts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're always lucky to pull pull guys who who know what they're doing. And you know, you get guys like Drew, which he's a great ball baseball player. But we're what really what I like about him is he's a, he's a student of the game. Yeah. So not only is he playing it, but like he knows Oof. situations and he drives a ball deep. That's just that long. is about it. on the batting cage. <laughs> yeah. So there's a two run home run for your buddy Drew Wires as he rounds third. That one almost made it to your field, Pona. <laughs> yeah, that does happen sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I've had a few where I'll be I'll be coaching, coaching a game, sitting in the dugout, and all of a sudden a ball rolls up and hits me in the foot. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that must have been that must have been Ryan Shin. Oh, that must have been yeah. that must have been uh, Odell or whomever, you know. Yeah, right-handed hitter could do that. <clears throat> so nine-two now, Hounds lead, up by seven. 
things are about to get out of hand. <clears throat> At this, uh, in this situation, though, I don't think the coach is going to change much. You, you yeah. come into this game kind of, kind of expecting the outcome to be, uh, you know, a, a difficult one. You don't, you yeah. don't know really what's going to happen. You, you know, you got a good ball team. You know, you got a chance. Uh, and you know you're going to have to fight at the plate, uh -huh. but you have to keep. You know he's got to manage pitching, and he knows yeah. he's probably got a couple of division games coming up. Um, and losing this doesn't, you know, this doesn't really mean much <laughs> for New Egypt. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I mean, and again, they played Northern earlier this year. They lost that game 13 to five. Yeah, we don't usually play them two times yeah. in a year, which is odd. But you know, it's, it's what it is. The schedule is the schedule. You play it. So New Egypt has one more game left against Florence. I'm not sure if they're in the same division, but I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, yeah. I forget which uh, which BCL division that is, but or BCSL. But you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. Kinks is really hanging in there. He's, he's yeah. He's not pitching poorly. He's pitching well. Um, he's just you know, there's been a few balls that were that were hittable. Uh, he had a couple of walks there. Obviously, you want to try and minimize those. Those will, those will kill you as a pitcher every single yeah. time. Uh, giving away bases for free, and especially when you walk in a run, that's tough. So base is clear for CJ. I'm sure he would have liked to have had somebody on there, but yeah. you know, it's what it is. Especially with that earlier home he gets run. Gets a sharp line drive out to left center. That oh. one gets to the fence. Can he make it to second? He, He's not the fastest he runner. Makes he it. does. He makes it. He is. Yeah, he is. Um, very much not the fastest runner. Yeah. Which is, you know, to be expected. When you're that big, it's hard to move quick. Yeah. You know? And I'm not even that big, and I can't move quick. So that's, <laughs> you know, doesn't speak very very well for me. But it's what it is. Uh, so Dromboski is up next with a runner in scoring position. CJ's on second. <sighs> Oof. He puts a ball into play. That looks like it's probably an easy routine fly yeah. ball. Oh, CJ tag! Wow! Whoa! Yeah, so the center fielder makes the play. CJ Fredericks <laughs> tags up from second base on a on a ball deep to center field and and makes it to third base. So I rescind my earlier yeah. <laughs> statement. Um, I guess he can move when he's motivated. That was really well done. Got to give CJ credit, but I believe that puts us at the second out of the first. I think that's first. Wow, man! Yes. Yeah. Put up uh, six runs on on no outs in the, f in the third inning, yeah. bottom of the second inning. Franco Peters up to bat now. Trying to get CJ in home. Oof. Just held up uh, on that yeah. one. Yeah. That dropped right in front of the plate. It didn't look like he went either, so nice job holding up there. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, comes in high, man. You gotta, nice that was a nice catch. athletic play by the catcher. Wow. How, did, how the <laughs> hell did he get up there? <laughs> Darn near jumped out of his socks to get that ball. Yeah. That looked like that was going to, like, drill the umpire in the face, too. <laughs> that would have been best-case scenario for New Egypt if it had, because yeah. otherwise that's going straight to the backstop. Uh-huh. Franklin's sitting at 3-0 right now. So we have CJ at third, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, because he tagged up. That's right. Yeah. Definitely going to take a pitch here. Ooh. And it's a ball. So, four-pitch walk. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, the fifth walk this inning, which yeah. is, is tough, but uh, it's what it is. We're going to get a courtesy runner. For Franklin Peters, looks like Ryan Kochi. So Keith Tillett. Well, actually, I think that's Nick Wolverton. I apologize. Nick Wolverton into run for Franklin Peters, and Keith Tillett up to bat. Keith got a double last uh, last yeah. last at bat, so that was the beginning of this inning. Yeah, they batted was. around. <laughs> Went through nine batters already through this inning, and runners at first and third. You know, they say uh, most of the time anybody can, any team can hang with any team for a few innings, but then there's usually one. There's always one inning where things don't go your way, and a lot of times the, the teams that are that are not as good, 
that's where they're they're going to have problems. If they can play solid, clean baseball, seven innings, any team can beat anybody any day. But yeah. <clears throat> when you have that one where you give up some Oof, base hits, a couple of walks. Uh, looks like Wolverton gets a little too far away from first. Makes it back in time, though. It would have been out if the first baseman caught that yeah. ball. <clears throat> CJ didn't want to tag there. <laughs> till it... Uh, until it flies out to right field. Wolverton was like 10 feet away from second base before he had to turn around <laughs> and come back. It's like a first and third situation, two outs for Matt Bressler. Balls in low inside. Kink's pitch count has got to be very high right now, especially in this inning. Yeah. In the second. <clears throat> it's um that's been a challenge. They, yeah. they they just started doing real like pitch count regulations uh, within the last you know ten seasons. Before uh -huh. that, you know it was it was you know obviously you, you tried to keep yeah. guys within reason. You didn't you didn't want to push them too far. Uh, you want to save their arms. These are your young guys who are. Yeah. You know they're still developing and, and growing, so you don't want to you don't want to get them hurt before they have the opportunity to move to the next level. But yeah, um, those pitch count regulations make it tough. They're they're tough to manage because certain number of days of rest after a certain number of pitches based on who's where, when, and why. Um, so yeah, but I would I'd probably yeah. put him up in the the 60s right now, mm -hmm. and that's that's the second inning. That's not where you want to be. Uh, Bressler gets a hold of one there, out to center field. Good shot, but easy routine fly ball for the center fielder. That'll put an end to the second inning with the score 9-2. Northern leads New Egypt. And Richie Brown comes back out. You'd like to see that. I mean, the pitcher yeah. loves to see his team scoring uh, and putting up numbers and getting them a lead that he can work with. Uh -huh. But it's tough coming in. Oh, nice play there. I think that's Menino. Yep, it's tough coming in with, you know, you were just sitting down for a solid 20 minutes. You yeah. Know, you, you, you get cool. It's hard to stay loose sometimes, but he gets one pitch, one out. A nice little uh -huh. simple fly ball to center field. Um, people put a lot of value on strikeouts, but, you know, honestly, you can get an out faster on one pitch than you can on three. Yeah. And it's more efficient. So if, you could, if you're a pitcher, you could throw ground ball, pop up. That's a valuable, that's a valuable tool. So Trapanese coming up as he sends it foul. Wires dives for it. Not able to get it, but it was foul anyway. Good effort. That one comes in high, 1-1. One, one. Look like a little breaker there. It's basically the same pitch twice yeah. in a row. <laughs> Saying before Richie, Watch out, track team. Yeah, right, that <laughs> one's foul out back, so 2-2. Two, two. Saying before, Richie tends to miss a little bit high um, when he does miss. He just doesn't always stay on top of the ball, you know? So yeah. Sometimes that'll, that'll bring you up in the zone. Um, you want to make sure you sit in it, drive, and, and stay on top of the ball. That one comes in low. But, you know, throw, being a, you know, throwing those balls missing high isn't always a bad thing. It's good to adjust that eye angle, uh, keep, the, keep the batter off. You know, if they're looking one thing and then comes in low, comes in high, um, it can it can be hard to adjust to those those changes. That's pop up. Till it going under. Nice makes easy the play. catch. So one out here in the top of the third. Or two, two outs, outs now. That yes. was the second. Two fly balls to the outfield. Two outs on six or seven pitches. Pretty good. Bring up number 14, Anthony Scazzari, left-handed hitter. He drives one out there to second base. Nico picks it up, makes the throw. In time. Close, but gets the out. Good speed, because Scazzari's got good speed down the line. He was really hustling, but uh, that brings the top of the third. 
to an end. No score for New Egypt. It's 9-2. to two. Kinks is back out there to throw again. He's going to probably try and tough this out for as long as he possibly can. Mateo uh, Menino. Another, another low low ball, so Mateo works himself a 2-0 count. Oh, that was uh, wasn't able to get to that one quite yeah. as well. <laughs> Looking to take a pitch here. Very rarely will a high school hitter get green light on 3-0. Yeah. They are not consistent enough to uh, to Ooh. give away a potential free base, which we just got. Yeah. Right, Mateo draws a walk. So another four-pitch walk for Kinks. And back to the top of the order. Yeah. Nico Grenier, this is his uh, third at bat, I believe. Yeah. Third at bat in, the, in as many innings. Oof. Some games you don't get, you know, you get only three. So this is uh, we're working through the lineup pretty quickly here. Runner on first, Nico gets a first pitch strike. Fastball outside. So baseball played yesterday. They won 10 nothing against Haddon Heights. Other teams that played yesterday were boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, and softball. Boys lacrosse, they're having a really great season, too. Grenier hits a ball to the outfield there. It looks like a pretty easy play, though. The center fielder makes a play, works it back in. So he got one out, runner on first still. Got underneath that one. Coach Darlin over there talking to Mateo, trying to give him some some advice. Coach Darlin at first, Coach Doppler at third. Uh, Marco Menino now trying to get his brother over, score him. A lot of Meninos, a lot of Meninos, all, yeah. all pretty good ball players. Gio yeah. Menino played center field for a few years. Yeah. Marco is a really solid infielder. Mateo yeah. is a good outfielder. Back then, when I played baseball back in the day, I, I was on one of their teams, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then there's another one, I think, uh, who's in middle school now, so he's looking to come up as well, and I'm sure he'll be as productive as his brothers are. They're all good, yeah. good baseball family. And uh, they make some pretty good food, too. Yes, they do. Got to give them credit there. <laughs> Marco calls timeout. Taking a little bit too long. As a batter, it's, you know, you, your pitcher's taking a long time. You, you, you start thinking too much. You get antsy. Um, so it could be advantageous to call timeout, step out for a second, recollect yourself, and then get back in the box. Norman has two games left. After this game, they play at Cinnaminton and against Burlington Township. That's here. Yep. It's uh, one more division game. I'm pretty sure at this point uh, it's more or less guaranteed to be a three-way tie between RV, Northern, and Morristown because each okay. team is one and one against the others. <laughs> uh, so Marco draws, drives a ball. Little chopping ground ball up the middle. And tried to turn two, not able to make a play on that. So we got Mateo safe at first. And Marco's pretty quick. Um, he wasn't able to beat that out, though. So did move the runner over. But now we have two outs. 
Runner on second base with Drew Wires coming up to hit. Drew picked up a it was a three run home run the last time, right? Two yes. runs? Is it three or run or two runs? It was two runs. Run. Run yeah, CJ's base. was the three run. CJ was the three run home run. So already in the third, we got two home runs and a bunch of RBIs. And yeah. Drew takes first pitch ball low. A little bit inside there. Another ball, 2 0 count. sent it back to the track. You must have liked that one 2 2 one like 2 like a 3-1. You want to get a pitch yeah. that you really like that you could drive. Um, as a coach, I always get a little upset when somebody gets to a 2-0 or 3-1 and they foul a ball off. It's like, yeah. if you're swinging at that I mean, pitch, it better be something you can you can murder. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it's baseball. It happens. It's a game of minute details and distances, and you get one millimeter low on a ball, and it's a foul. He gets a hold of that one. Sends it to left. And, and gone. Uh, bye bye. That's uh second that's... home run. Oh, no, it looks like that one went foul. But it would have been a home oh. run. It wasn't fair. That looked like it was going to your field, too. Drew steps back in to hit after a sharp foul ball. Oh, there's the old 50 footer again. It can be advantageous sometimes to throw that, uh, that breaking ball in the dirt in front of the plate, but you got to locate it a little bit closer to the plate. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, it's too easy to read as a ball. Caught that one on the elbow, oh, yeah. so gets a hit by pitch, free bag for Drew. Probably much would have preferred to have, uh, you know, been able to hit the ball, but mm -hmm. if they're giving bases away, you know, you know what the old teacher credo is: is if it's free, it's for me. Yeah. So you got to take what you can get. Which brings up CJ. Had a three-run bomb earlier in the game. Yep. Can attack on a few here. High school baseball, you can never have too many runs. Yeah, you know? Goes to deliver. Gets a little strike on that one. A little high in yeah. it, but, you know, hey, if CJ's in on the plate, strike's a strike, whether you mm -hmm. like it or not. Guys, one foul. Looks like that's out on the third base side. And just dropped. CJ Fredericks leads the team in home runs at five. Whoa. That, uh, uh. That, that is a curveball that he did not stay on top of. Yeah. Uh, so that ends up flying all the way to the backstop. Drew moves up to second nice and easy, no throw. So now we got a runner on second base. CJ is at a 1-2 count, I believe. Mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes. Nice job by the catcher, too. Tried to get to quick. it. Yeah. Got a glove on it, which is suppressive because that thing was, that was over CJ. So that yeah. was probably about eight feet in the air. Another solid swing, fouls one off to the first base side this time.
outside for another ball. Keeping this at bat alive, trying to get something to hit. Is that three and two now? I think, right? I think that might be two and two. Okay. CJ sends a grounder and grounder to the left side gets gets the out. Kind of abandons two guys. Get a Menino and Wires left on base, second and third. So here we go to the top of the fourth. Richie Brown Luden back out the, the pitch. Starts off strong with a nice uh, nice strike on the outside corner there. Grounder the third. Nice play by Drew Wires. Makes a play. Ball was foul. A little Brooks Robinson looking action there. Yeah. Coming across the line and just throwing all arm across the diamond. It's a nice play there by Drew Wires. It's a grounder. Kind of weak swing this Drew. time. Drew bobbles it a little bit. Don't know if he's going to be able to make a play. Looks like he's got to eat it. Runner's going to be safe at first. Just couldn't quite get a glove on it. That one was a little bit. A little bit to the left side, I think he was expecting maybe, again, to have to go to the right side, and that kind of snuck up on him, bobbled it a little bit, wasn't able to get a hold of it. So uh, the runner's going to reach on an error. Which brings up a lefty. The runner on first, no outs. Justin McKnight. First strike in there, which is a curveball for a strike. He likes that curveball early in the count. The grounder to first, CJ has it. It's going to be a 3 U unassisted for first baseman CJ Fredericks. Did a good job blocking it with the body. A lot of guys try too hard to get the glove on a hard chopper like that uh, and end up missing it. So you want to make sure you get in front of it, take it to the body. Make a play, get the out. Garrett Scheibel coming up for New Egypt. I haven't seen it spelled that way before. Scheibel. I don't know if you could name Scheibel, but he steps in to see Richie Lou. Brown Luton here. That's a grounder to third. Swing. Drew Wires has it and throws to first. Nice stop there by Drew Wires. And now there's one away. Or two away, right? Two away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because CJ had his own assistant. Mm -hmm. Drew's yeah. got that. In scoring position, looking to try to get him around home now. We should get the river again. As well, good block again by Franklin. Nice and he pitch. gets him, gets him wow. swinging. They're, uh, out number three in the inning. Get a abandon a runner on base there. Bottom four, Northern leads by seven. We scored nine to two. Looks like uh, New Egypt pulled the plug on Kinks, so we got Sean Dessel in now to pitch. Who is that, Menino, I think? That's Ryan Jombosky. Oh, yeah, that's Jombosky. Leading off the inning, we got five, six, seven coming in here. Jombosky 
Sorry, Ryan Boyd. My bad. Oh. Ryan Boyd <laughs> fouls one back. Nice little curveball by, uh, what was his name? Dessen, I think. Yeah, Dessel. Dessel? Sean Dessel. Doesn't quite get the strike a little bit inside, but it's some good movement to it. Dessel is a sophomore. He also plays in the outfield, too. Gets a strike call on fastball low. That one's a ball. And ball four takes a walk. Ryan Boyd's one of those guys who can kind of play all over the place, but lately he's been playing a lot of outfield. Uh, I know he can play first base, play a little bit third base, but um, you know, Drew and Marco and CJ, yeah. there's not a lot of room open in the infield there. The infield's pretty well locked down, so he's been really good at uh, adjusting to Franklin Peters in now, trying to make something happen. We got man on first, no outs, bottom of four. Takes the ball high. So the mercy rule goes into effect if we go up by 10 here. Correct? You got to make it through four and a half. So the visiting team has to get up in the top of the fifth. Okay. And then after that, if there's a 10 run lead, then the mercy rule comes into effect. Okay. Stealing RB the second. takes off. Good break, great steal, not even getting a throw down. So <laughs> nice job by Ryan Boyd taking second base, getting himself in scoring position for Franklin Peters. Another one upstairs. Ooh, nice That's... shot. Franklin takes one to right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Looks like Ryan Boyd is going to round third and head home. And a nice little RBI single for Franklin Peters. Great piece of hitting right there. Worked himself into a good hitter's count and did the job. Yeah. 10 to 2 now, <coughs> Hammond's lead. I've been put in a courtesy runner for the catcher. For those who don't know, in high school baseball, you can use a courtesy runner for your pitcher and catcher. Uh, that way they have time to get ready since it takes a long time for a catcher to get his gear on. Sometimes the pitcher is trying to stay warm. Um, so if they get on base, you could put in somebody to run for him. It doesn't count as a pinch runner, uh, and that person can re-enter the game in another location, unlike a typical pinch running situation. So Ryan Calorio will take that spot yep. at first. That'll get that on something. Drew for a base hit. Yeah. Moving the runner over second. So Calario at second now. Men on first and second base. It looks like it brings Matt Bressler back to the plate now.
It looked like last batter might have been uh, Nick Wolverton, so it looks like there were some substitutions made. Ball in there to Matt Bressler looks like a ball. He drives one out to left field. That one looks like it's going to drop. And that's going to move Franklin, or sorry, Ryan Calario over to third. So base is loaded for the Hounds. Nick Wolverton at second, Matt Bressler at first. No outs, I think, right? Yeah, no outs. So we're, uh, this is a good offensive position to be in. You want to try and get a couple more runs here. This looks like we've got Ryan Kochi in now. Kochi is a sophomore. He's been getting some playing time in the outfield as well. But he's also another guy who can play a little bit of infield here and there, hits the ball relatively well. Takes a ball high. Another one upstairs. Yeah, two balls, so he's got a 2 0 count now, looking for something to hit. So maybe he just has corners up at the very least, first baseman playing up. Almost, but uh, looks like he moves into a 3 0 count with another ball up in the zone. We just trying real hard not to give things away again. Mm -hmm. Another four-pitch walk for New Egypt, so that'll bring a, a run home. Gloria will score in Franklin Peters' spot. So now we got Kochi on first, Bressler on second, and Wolverton on third. And that brings us back to the top of the lineup. So Nico Garnier stepping up to hit again. Stairs for a ball. Looks like Dessel's having a little trouble locating. Keeps missing high. Mm -hmm. Five balls in a row. As a batter, you got to understand your situations as they evolve at this point. It's a batter. you got to be walking in here and making him throw you a strike. Not Unlike so. that. <laughs> it's a little bit of undisciplined hitting. All right. Guy's throwing five balls in a row, and then you foul the ball off. What and now we have guys... On? Making base running what? errors. Wolverton's in a rundown between and third and first. He's safe at third. Which makes Bressler have to go back to second. <laughs> Kochi had already taken first. And, and somehow they escape that pickle with no damage. Wow. But a situation like that, you gotta basically, as, the, as that lead runner, you're giving yourself up. You gotta yeah. move those other guys over. You have to accept that you're probably dead. Um, let, let Bressler and Kochi move over to second and third. Hold the run down as long as you can, hope for a mistake, and try to score. Uh, but that could have ended disastrously because you had two other base runners out of position who had to go back. If New Egypt was able to make that play quickly, you, you're, you got two outs. And that, All of a sudden, that and, turns into a triple play. And that's also bad for New Egypt, too. Like You at least have to get somebody out. You have to get at least situation. one out in that situation. Come on. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I, that's not really excusable. Then I'll bring up Marco Menino. Did a run score on that play or no? Uh, no, no, because oh, Wolverton okay. took off. Everybody took off, but everybody ended up back where they came from. Looks like it's popped Marco up. Pops one. That's going to be an infield fly rule. It's runners on first and second, or in this situation, first, second, and third. Anything to the infield is going to be automatically called an out. So that puts two outs. Yeah, bases loaded and two pop pop up okay. outs is. Uh, that will, that, will drive a, that will drive a yeah. coach insane. 
So now Drew Wires uh, has a home run. He had that earlier in the game. Almost had another one his last at bat. But that went just foul. Nice little pitch. He Sends takes a swing one. at first pitch. It's going to be a line drive out to left field. One that should bring in at score. least two. Four. Yeah, two runs will score. That'll so now, 11 run lead for the Hounds. That one slides Kochi over to second, so Drew Wires. New, another two more RBIs on the day. He's at first. That scored Wolverton and Matt Bressler, making it a 13 to 2 game right now. And bringing up CJ Fredericks. Side for the ball. Going oh, outside, two and out. Tough position to be in as a pitcher. You don't want to have to give CJ a fastball to hit, but yeah, when you get into a two zero count, you don't want to get into a three zero count. And you don't want to walk a guy, mm -hmm. um, but you got to figure, you know, what's worse, giving a guy a base when you got somewhere to put him, or uh, you know, giving up a three-run home run. But yeah. CJ takes a strike below the bottom of the zone there, giving it a two-one count. So Dessel's doing his best to pepper the corners. Uh -huh. Ooh, gets one high, working back. That's that's impressive. He's down yeah. to back to a two-two count now. <clears throat> It's a grounder foul. So Man. two and two. I hit that one hard because I saw yeah. the dirt go up and then <laughs> I couldn't even see the ball. Up. That looks like it's going to be a fly out to uh, shallow outfield there. And that will do it for the inning. New Egypt will be able to make a play on that one. Uh, so that'll be 13-2, top five. Looks like New Egypt needs to score at least two to keep this game going. Tony Kanaki into pitch now, left-hander. A little bit outside. <clears throat> Tony is actually a freshman. But, uh, he's a good, solid baseball player. He's got good speed, can field the ball, plays uh, plays outfield, and obviously can pitch, throws hard, good arm. He's got a little bit of a difficult delivery to read, kind of violent, but does the job. Looks like he gives up a sharp hit ground ball through the left side, and that's going to be a base hit to lead off the inning. So lead off single for New Egypt, looking to at least get two runs to keep this game alive for them. As Zachary Jenkins comes up to the plate. Zachary and Jenkins. A little bit of a different monster with base runners on, runner on first with a left-handed pitcher. Uh, a little bit tougher to get a get a lead, get a break, and steal. So you, you, defensively, you have a somewhat of an advantage. Uh, and it's a lot easier for a left-handed pitcher to throw over quickly because you don't have to completely turn your body and change your shoulder angle to make a good throw. Nice okay, slide, slip over. That ball's going to be hit sharp up the middle. So uh, that one I looks like it's going to be through two. No, it won't. So we'll another stay in second, another single to uh, keep this inning moving. Runners on first and second, no outs. And that could be the trick sometimes. Bringing in uh, an opposite-handed pitcher tends to be the way the game works. That uh, you know, batters see the ball a little bit better from an opposite-handed pitcher. 
So right-handed hitters are generally usually going to be able to see the ball a little bit better coming out of a left-hander's hand, uh, give a little bit more time to adjust and, and, and put a swing on the ball. Not always the case, but that's generally how it goes, but you'll see what happens here. It's the first pitch called strike. Obviously looking for a ground ball, turn a double play, work your way out of the situation. Steps off. Runner at second probably getting a bit too much of a lead. And comes in low, good pick up by Franklin. Big swing on that one, tips it, sends it back to the backstop. <clears throat> two strikes on, I think it's a 2 2 count. How many outs have we got? None. None. It's a bit of a sticky wicket. You want to try and get something to go, yeah. going here defensively. Ooh, yeah. it's a half swing. That one's going to go to Nico, who's going to have to take it at first. Got a too, too good of a break on the runner from first to second, so yeah. that. At that place, you know, you got a, a short little weak ground ball, take its time. This is a slow infield, too, so mm -hmm. anything that hits the grass takes a while to get through. Uh, so you had to go ahead and make that play at first and barely got that out. But we got one down runners on second and third now. That's Richard Trapanese coming up. New Egypt still needs those two runs up. Well, they've worked themselves into a good position. Yeah. Simple sack fly gets at least one. If he hits a base hit, then there's your two right there. Mm -hmm. uh, that runner on second knows that his job is to score here, so he's going to be trying his best to do that. Japanese swings, takes a strike there. Tony kind of fooled him with something on the low outside corner. Ooh. Oh, oh, he got the he, call. Okay. <laughs> Umpire took a second to make that decision, but that was definitely a nice little breaking ball in the outside corner there. I think the batter knew before it was even called yeah. and just started walking away. That's two outs now. Takes a lot of the pressure off. Fly ball or ground ball to an infielder. You can make that play at first, get out of here, no damage. Anthony Scazzari trying to change that lefty on lefty, so hopefully that gives Kanaki a little bit of a head. So Takes a swing at one, chopper. They're going to make ah, it. Chopper, an error on the chopper to the right side down the third baseline. Kanaki tries to make a quick play on it, throw it around to first. Scores. But uh, ends up throwing it past CJ, and the, those two runs are going to score. So We're not getting now, out of here early. Bro. Now they're within, <laughs> uh, they're within nine, so it means this inning keeps going. Uh, that error also moves the base runner over to second. So, runner on second, two outs. I mean, that's a tough. That's a real tough play for a yeah. left-handed pitcher to make on the third baseline, trying to turn, make a quick throw. At that point, you might be better off just eating it and, and letting the run score and trying to hold it. Uh, but yeah. you know, in that, it's happening so quick, you got to just make a decision. Yeah, and also it was right near the foul line too. He didn't know if it was foul or fair as yep. well. So. Could have given it a chance to let yeah. it go, see what happens, maybe get another opportunity. But hindsight is twenty twenty. Here we are now, so gotta deal with the situation you have. That's sent to left or center. Shot to the outfield. Looks like uh, Coach is able to make that play. And that was Garnier. Garnier. Nah, it was it was Coach. Coach okay. caught it and just tossed it over to, to Garnier, but uh, gets him out of the inning. Nice little pop yeah. fly. So, Hound scored one run here. That's it, right? If they score one, yeah, game would be over. So it could be an opportunity for a walk-off. It uh, looks like Ryan Drobosky steps in. Unless this is Ryan Boyd again. Yes. Yeah, look at me, man. I keep doing <laughs> that. There's too many Ryans, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot From a distance, Ryan's they look there. somewhat similar. Up close, not so much. Yeah. Got the same gear too. Like, boy takes a big swing, not able to get a hold of it. 
How many Ryans do we got on this team? Let's see. One. Ryan Kochi, Ryan Boyd, two, Ryan Clario, Ryan Drabowski. Four. Five. Wait. Four. four. Yeah, four. And that's just on varsity. That's just on varsity. You have, you have a couple Ryans on your JV team, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't have as many Ryans on the JV team. in there for a strike. Oh, takes it looking. Third strike. Called strike looking. Take care of Boyd. Franklin Peters stepping in again. Got that nice base hit last time. Scored, scored a run or two. Vessel's still on the bump here. Call that a strike. This is one of those situations where the... Uh, as the game carries on, the strike zone gets a little bit yeah. bigger, I think. Because <laughs> that, was, that was questionable. The run differential here. <laughs> All right. Not going to do it two yeah. times in a row. <laughs> I'm going to give him a ball on that one, so 1-1 one, one count. That's a little bit outside. Ooh, way high. Another nice stop there by the catcher. 3-1 count now for Franklin Peters. Looking for a ball to hit. He will not get it, and he will take his base. So Franklin Peters heads to first. Looks like... Uh, Coach will let him run for himself. He's a speedy catcher, so replacing him on base doesn't really, unless you need him to get ready to warm up or get dressed with two outs, uh, you're, you're better off letting him run for himself. Which looks like we have Nick Wolverton at the plate now. Shows bunt, pulls back. Peter steals, and he's safe. There's that speed we were just talking about. Peter's taking the lead off second base now. Nick Wolverton hoping to move him to third, or at the very least, you know, at the very least, move him to third, and then maybe get him to score. Looks like. Uh, Peters might be living rent free in the pitcher's head right now. This is taking a while to deliver. Probably trying to hold him on. Although with a nine run deficit, I don't know that you should spend so much effort on that. Wolverton. Let's hit out to left. Oh, what a catch. Yeah, that was a barehanded catch. <laughs> very, very impressive. I, don't, I mean, I don't know why you'd go barehand on that, but. Yeah. <laughs> take what you could get, I guess. Nice play by the second baseman. <laughs> That was number 12, Ryan DiStefano. Looks like we got uh, Ryan Calario stepping in now. One of the left-handed bats on the team. Does a nice job of hitting the ball up the middle. Second one's in there for a ball. I believe the first was a ball as well, so we're looking yeah. at a supposedly 2-0 count. Once again, taking a step off to keep Franklin close on second base there. First strike. And a 
another step off. Really doesn't want Franklin taking third base here. And it's popped foul. Chips that one off the third base side out of play. So Franklin scores here, it's game over. <laughs> yep. Clario leans out in front, it rolls over a little bit too soon before making contact. Usually that'll lead you to what you just saw, which is a weak ground ball up the middle, which gives us out number three, it takes us to the top of six, with the Hounds still leading by nine, 13 to four. Here's Justin McKnight up from New Egypt. Tony Kanaki back in to pitch the sixth. This is low outside for a ball. First pitch. Popped up. It's another little chopper and at first. CJ makes a play. A three unassisted put out. Out number one, two, you know, two, three pitches, one out. We'll take it. Yeah. That's in there for a strike. It's a nice pitch. <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, hitters are told to kind of let that outside fastball go. Uh, it's not really a hitter's pitch. So for a pitcher to be able to locate that on the outside of the plate, first pitch um, is a good way to get ahead, get a, you know, get into an 0-1 count mm -hmm. to start with. And then he comes back a little off speed outside and gets him for a swing. So it's 0-2 now. And that was ooh. right there. Three pitches, one out. So two outs now. That was a nice that was a nice at bat for a pitcher right there. Yeah. That's another one in there. Looks like he's have finally starting to see that zone a little bit better. Yeah. Been able to place the ball where he needs it. Another one tipped. Yeah. Tony's up 0-2. Swing and a miss. Tony gets a K there. That's a nice little up and down one, yeah. two, three inning. So bring us to the bottom of the sixth. Three up, three down. So New England leads 13 14. All they need is one run, and then the mercy rule will go into effect. I just realized that if Tony had struck out that first kid instead of. We got a ball out here from uh, Ryan Kochi to the outfield. That's going to be caught for out number one. But if Tony had struck out that first batter. He would have had an immaculate inning. Huh? If that third, if that third pitch was a strike without a hit, it would have been three pitches, strike, strike, strike for each batter for the whole inning. Wow! Immaculate inning. Although I don't know if it technically counts because there were a couple foul tips. Yeah. <laughs> I think you might have to not have the batter make contact at all, but still, it's pretty impressive. And that's lined out to to left. Yeah. Braden Drumboski getting an at bat. Taking, taking an, an attempt, it's a hack at the first pitch, getting a single through the left side between shortstop and, and third baseman. So it was a nice little hit. So now with one out, we got a runner on first base. Braden, of course, is uh, Ryan's little brother. He's a sophomore this year. Plays middle infield mostly, it's takes off, gets a, gets a break there. Looks like a fly ball, though. He's going to have to come back 
Play is made by number 10. I believe that's Dolan, right? Yes. So, two outs, runner on first. Looked like uh, that was a pinch hitter for Marco Menino. So now Drew Wires is back in in the three spot. He's going to hit for himself. Getting into the uh, later innings of this this game with a nine lead nine run lead, Coach Doppler's giving some other guys opportunities to uh, get something done. So mm -hmm. he pinch hit Braden for Nico, get a little base hit. Ryan Kochi not able to uh, drop one in there, but he made contact. So now we'll have Drew with two outs. See if he can get this this run that would set the ten run deferential yeah. and end the game here. But we'll see. Hit that one, didn't he? Oh, he did. Looked like it went foul. <laughs> Grumboski takes off. He'll get on and de through defensive indifference. The catcher. Popped and cocked his arm back, but decided not to throw. It's not really worth it at this point. Yeah. You know, you got two outs. You're down nine runs. Just get the batter at this point. <laughs> Plus, if Drew's making contact, chances are he's going to be able to score no matter yeah. where he's coming from. So you're better off just trying to strike him out or get him to, get him to induce a ground ball and make an easy play. That's popped up out to left. Oh, just outside third base, third baseman makes a play. So there you go. You didn't get your ground ball, but yeah. you got your nice <laughs> pop foul and foul, pop up and foul territory. Ooh, swing and miss. Nice pitch there by Kaunaki. It looks like he's really starting <laughs> to get his uh, his off speed stuff yeah. going because these guys are they don't know what to do with it. And I, <laughs> you know the difference in arm angle between Richie and now Tony, where you got a righty to a lefty. Uh huh. You know that's still difficult for these pitchers or the hitters. Sorry. Fouls one back, so we are at uh, two strikes. Let's go. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball to the right side. Nico makes a play on it, and you get a 4 3 put out there with a head first slide for uh, dramatic effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I am not a big fan of the head first slide into first base. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think it really speeds you up at all. The yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't get. I mean, I do see some people do it a lot, but probably just slows don't you get down. Why. Yeah. Looks like we had a straight sub for Braden Drumboski, who's now playing second base. Pitch is in high. Just kind of gets around on one. Ooh! Drops that nice into right center play. field where Ryan Calario makes a heck of a diving yeah. catch there. That was an excellent play by Calario getting yeah. that second out. Which reminds me that I need to go back and the amend that the, the previous play was not made by Nico. It was made by <laughs> Braden. Because he is now playing second base. So well played. Dolan back up, two outs in the top of seven, trying to keep this thing alive. 
It would be a heck of a rally at this point. He has a little ground ball out to the left side. That goes through. That'll sneak through for a base hit. So he's doing his part. All right. How many outs we got? One or two? Two outs. Two outs, runner on first. Nine run differential, top seven. Ooh, that Oof. one will sneak by, move Dolan over to second base. Really not that big of a deal. I mean, Franklin's been pretty consistent all day. Yeah, stopping the majority of uh, balls in the dirt, but you know, occasionally he's gonna miss one. Mm -hmm. comes in low too, so I think we're at a 2-0 count here. Oof. That one's in for a strike. It's a 3-1. to deliver. He gets a sharp hit ball foul. That'll load the count, so we're looking at a th full count of 3-2. And ball four. Not able to locate that one. It was close. It was right almost at that top corner, but call goes to the batter. He gets his base, and so now runners on first and second, two outs. Brings up a lefty. This is a good matchup, lefty on lefty. Mm -hmm. Hi. Franklin makes a nice block on that one, keeping the runners where they're at. Ooh. Guess Franklin didn't like that secondary yeah. <laughs> lead off second base, so he takes a shot down there. Didn't quite get it, but putting people on notice. You gotta respect that arm. Drew Wires comes out, pump up Tony a little bit. Another ball low, another walk. So, so bases loaded. Went from two outs, nobody on, to two outs, bases loaded. Two walks in the inning, which is generally not a good thing, but with a nine-run lead, you have a little bit of flexibility. If this was a closer game, we'd probably be seeing somebody else right now. But we're gonna let's we're gonna ride this and see if uh, Tony can can finish this thing off. It's not a bad situation, really defensively. Uh, you can afford to give up a couple runs, and now you got to force on any bag. So mm -hmm. easier to get the out <clears throat> on a ground ball. There's a ball shot up the middle. Looks like that will be taken by Marco Menino. He's going to do a do it by himself. Step on the bag, get that third out, and send this thing to the books. Northern Woods, 13-4. It's been a pleasure, Logan. Yeah, it was. And <laughs> have a good day.